The elbow is an important hinge joint located on the upper extremity. It bridges the shoulder and the hands, and the main function of the elbow is to position and maximally stabilize the hand when you try to perform tasks um, and when you try to do anything such as work. So on the dorsal surface, uh, you can note that there's a cubital fossa, uh, and frequently this is where you would check for access when you're drawing blood and for vena punctures. Posteriorly, this is where you'll find the triceps tendon when you're testing for uh, motor function of the triceps, and also you'll find the ulnar groove uh, where the ulnar nerve passes through. So the elbow joint consists of articulations between the humerus and two bones in the forearm, the ulna and the radius. Uh, this is primarily a hinge joint, uh, so the ulna and radius uh, primarily does flexion and extension there. Um, the radius articulates with the capitulum of the humerus, and the ulna articulates with the trochlea. So there are many ligaments that help to support and stabilize the elbow joint. There is the medial ulnar collateral ligament on the medial aspect. You have the lateral collateral ligament on the lateral aspect, and then you have a lateral ligament of the radius, which kind of wraps around uh, that radial head and helps to stabilize uh, the radius in the elbow joint. There's an interosseous membrane that lies between the ulna and the radius. Uh, a lot of uh, blood vessels, uh, nerves may transport through there. The fibers vary in different orientation and it helps to stabilize um, the ulna and the radius. This is also an important site uh, for lymphatic drainage of the upper extremity. Uh, any sort of uh, twists, uh, restrictions may potentially decrease lymphatic drainage from the upper extremities in the hand. So the two basic motions of the elbow include flexion and extension. So the major muscles um, that help with ulnohumeral flexion include the brachialis, brachioradialis, and biceps brachii. So the brachialis uh, is more on the lower side of the humerus and inserts into the tuberosity of the ulna, while the brachioradialis um, also uh, supinates slightly uh, during extreme pronation. The brachioradialis is one of those muscles that we test um, for reflexes, uh, checking for C5. The biceps brachii is the main elbow flexors. It also has properties to supinate based on its attachment um, on the coracoid process. The brachialis is the main muscle used when the elbow is flexed slowly. The other function of the elbow is extension. So the main muscle that helps with that is the triceps muscle. There's some help with the anaconus muscle, um, but the triceps really is the main extensor of the elbow. Uh, it has attachments um, from the shoulder, and so uh, motion of the shoulder and position of the shoulder will affect its, affect its efficiency. Um, if you have hyperextension, uh, there is risk of injuring and damaging the olecranon. Um, you could also tear uh, capsules and ligaments in the region, um, and sometimes you could also damage the blood vessels in the region. So um, when discussing motion testing at the elbow joint, uh, we have two main motions. Uh, we could uh, talk about flexion and extension, and then we could also talk about supination and pronation, which is the articulation between the ulna and the radius. So the normal range um, for extension is zero um, to five degrees. So um, when we talk about um, the anatomical neutral position, this is anatomical neutral where our, our um, elbow is um, extended. And so extension of the elbow is zero. Flexion then uh, could come up all the way to about 130, 145 degrees um, with um, active range of motion. If I then passively try to push um, the elbow further into flexion, you could get to about maybe 150, 160 degrees. Pronation and supination. Um, pronation, you get average about uh, 75 degrees. So pronation is with your um, hands in uh, a vertical position. You're going to bring your palm facing towards the floor. Supination is going the other way, where you're gonna bring your palms facing the ceiling. Um, a simple way to remember supination is that in order to hold a bowl of soup, you have to turn your palm facing up. And so supination is usually a little bit more than pronation, about 85 degrees. So there is limited motion in the coronal plane at the elbow. The elbow based of, on anatomy uh, is more flexion and extension, and since it's a hinge joint, there's very little lateral and medial motion. Valgus motion is the motion named when the forearm and the hand moves a little bit more lateral. It's, um, the motion is uh, coupled with forearm abduction and supination, and it's the movement of the hand and forearm away from the body. 
The simple way to remember valgus is that there's a letter L in the word, and so when you're kind of bringing the hand further away, it sort of makes a letter L. Varus is the other motion, so varus motion is coupled with forearm adduction and pronation, and that is the movement of the forearm and hand towards the body a little bit more medial. So everybody has a carrying angle, so when we're in anatomical neutral, our elbow will valgus a little bit more. Uh, normally you have 5 to 15 degrees of valgus. Males is a little bit um, less than females. This is due to the shape of our different um, our articulating surfaces, and it allows the elbow to fit more closely to the waist. Sometimes you may have a uh, abnormality in that carrying angle, so a uh, gun stock deformity is also called cubitus varus. So here, uh, the elbow is stuck more in a varus position as opposed to valgus. Sometimes this could be due to a uh, fracture um, at the supracondylar or uh, the epicondylar region. So there are two main articulations at the elbow joint. Uh, flexion extension occurs about the elbow joint. Um, that's the uh, true elbow joint. It's a hinge joint, and it's the uh, articulation between the humeral trochlea and ulnar trochlear notch. Pronation and supination uh, motion of the forearm is considered elbow motion, but it really is the motion of the radius and ulna articulating um, over each other. So in supination, our um, ulna and radius are going to be straight, and then in pronation, the ulna is going to cross over the radius bone. The epicondyles are where most of the muscles in the forearm uh, originate. Uh, the medial epicondyle um, primarily has attachments of the flexor muscles and the pronator muscles, whereas the lateral epicondyle usually has the extensors and supinator muscles. Uh, this is important to remember because different pathologies of the uh, wrist and elbow uh, could be traced back anatomically to the origin and insertion of these muscles.